Hi, I'm Lee Johnson from The Conscious Creative and welcome to this public speaking skills video. We met first at Cambridge University at the leading change event and now I'm excited to share some of the tips and tools that I've used in the last 15 years as a public speaker and television presenter to help you get the most out of your public speaking opportunities, whether they be in front of a live audience or to a camera like I am just now. This initial video is about warming up and your mental preparation. Now, some of what I say might seem quite obvious, but I've been surprised in the past at how many people are missing out some basic things that can really help you to be understood. So firstly, I'll talk about warming up the voice, which is very important to make sure that we actually look after our voice and don't lose or damage it in any way. And then we'll also talk about projection as well and articulation so that you can be properly heard. So the first thing I like to start doing is warming up my face. So very simply, I just warm my hands up a little bit and just start massaging around the face. So around the temples, around the cheekbones, and just around the mouth and the jaw here. And if you open your mouth a little, you can just feel where the jawbone attaches here and just give that a little gentle massage as well. Also just rubbing the face, literally kind of like we do in the morning, just helps us to wake up and just get some blood to this area as well to make sure everything is working properly. After warming up my face, I like to warm up my tongue. Now, one great thing I like to do is to move my tongue around between the inside of my lips and my teeth, like so. So you go around one way and then back the other. Then you can stick your tongue into the side of your cheeks. You can stick it out. You can roll it. You can twist it if you, you can do that, which I can't. <laughs> And you can also try to touch your nose, <laughs> which I can't do either. After warming up the tongue, I like to then warm up my lips. So uh, a horse impression is a good way to do this, like so. And you'll just start to feel them vibrate and tingle a little bit. And you can even put a bit of a sound to it. And then just humming. And you can start to feel them tingling. And again, we're just getting some blood to the lips and giving them some more attention. Next, I want to talk about articulation. Now, this is very important because you've got something important that you want to say in public and you want to make sure that people can understand you as clearly as possible. One of my favourite exercises to do to help me warm up my mouth in that respect and improve my articulation is the following. So it's going through the vowels of the alphabet, starting with different consonants. And you can really overemphasize just to keep those facial muscles moving. Ta 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 ta, to te to te, to tea to tea, to tie to tie, to toe to toe, to two to two. And while it may look kind of silly, you can be doing this on your own. You don't have to do it in front of other people. But you can then just work through other consonants. Mama, mama, mame, mame, mami, mami, mamai, mamai, mamo, mamo, mamu, mamu. I tend to do about 10 different letters to help me warm up. After that, I really like to use tongue twisters. Now, a couple of my favourites are the following. She sells seashells on the seashore. The shells that she sells are seashells, I'm sure. And then I would speed up and say it many times. Another favourite is Betty bought a bit of butter, but the bit of butter Betty bought was bitter. So Betty bought another bit of butter to make the bit of bitter butter better. And a great one for your oo sounds as well is the following. You know New York, you need New York, you know you need unique New York. It can be a bit of a mouthful, that one. Resonance is another important thing that helps us to be understood and also helps with our projection. A great exercise for improving your resonance is sirening. So to just start with a hum, for example, and then go up as high as you can and then slide down and slide back up and down. So as you do that now, you might find that as you go into the high notes, you feel the resonance in your face and the top of your head 
and when you move down into the lower notes you can feel that resonance drop down into your chest. So this is just giving an example of the whole area that we're using that will resonate, that vibrates basically, to help us be heard. So just do it again and just feel that resonance moving all the way through. Now a really important part of speaking, which a lot of people seem to overlook, is our breathing. It's very common that people, certainly when they're nervous, tend to breathe just using a very small portion of their lungs. Just up here in the top portion of the lungs. You see there's quite a lot of shoulder movement and we're not actually using the full lungs, so we're not taking in a lot of breath. So we end up having to breathe more. But the lungs, in fact, of course, are far more three-dimensional, more like balloons. So they open downwards and outwards, to the front, to the back, to the sides. And we can demonstrate that now. If you just put your hands on your ribs, okay? So just under your rib cage here is your diaphragm. It's a large muscle that sort of sits like a dome underneath your rib cage. And when we breathe, that muscle pulls down and the ribs, as you can see where my elbows would be, are moving out. And then we breathe out and it comes back in. So if you put your hands on your ribs just now, and as you breathe in, just feel your ribs expand as you take a slow, deep breath. There, so we can actually breathe using our full lungs. And it also has quite a calming effect on you as well, if you are nervous. This is sometimes called intercostal diaphragmatic breathing. That's because we're using the diaphragm, but also the intercostal muscles, which are the muscles between the ribs. So we're actually using all of these muscles here to make sure that we're getting as much air into our lungs as possible. So now we've taken in a nice deep breath and we're ready to start speaking. Another thing I use to warm up is shushing. So take in a nice deep breath and then shh. So as you shush, you can feel your ribs coming in and you can feel the force of that breath coming out. So then beyond that, if now you take another deep breath in, but we're going to rev that shush like a motorbike. I'll show you. And you can feel as you do that, the stomach muscles just moving inwards and pushing. So we're just starting to bring our attention to this whole area to help us with our projection. If you're speaking to a large group of people without the aid of a microphone, then projection is very important. What a lot of people tend to do when they're speaking louder is to shout or to strain from here, which really isn't very comfortable and it's not very nice to listen to, but also it's going to wear your voice out very quickly and can give you quite a sore throat. So my intention when I'm speaking to a larger group without a microphone is to speak from the stomach. So we've just felt how those muscles engage through our breathing exercises. And now with this little exercise, we can just start to build on that even further. So using the words flee, fly, flow, we're gonna take in a big deep breath and then project from the stomach using those words. Flee, fly, flow. Flee, fly, flow. So that's not straining my voice and I can feel the work coming from down here in my stomach, just gently supporting my voice. Another thing when you are talking to a larger group is to aim to be heard by the people at the back. Now that's not to mean that you just, you, you just look at those people or you sort of glance over the top of everybody but just make sure that you're speaking to the people at the back of the room to make sure that everyone in the room can hear you clearly. You might find that before you speak to a camera or to a group of people that you get very nervous and actually public speaking is rated among the top three fears in many countries across the world 
why this is, I don't know. But it's often up there with things like fear of death, fear of snakes and spiders. Now, the first thing I'd say is let yourself off the hook. Be gentle with yourself. And also that your audience are behind you. They want you to do well. They're not sitting there hoping for you to fail. And they're probably pretty glad that there's someone else up there speaking rather than themselves. In my own experience, one of the worst things you can do with nerves or that fear is to try and suppress it, to actually push it down because when we push it away, it tends to come out in some other way. For me, what you resist persists. So what you're pushing away, it's just going to come back even stronger. So as much as possible, just try to allow it to move. Sometimes it can simply be a case of mislabeling. Often before, and this is the same with some people that I've worked with, that nervousness is actually excitement. You might find that's the same kind of energy. So maybe you're just really excited about this speaking opportunity that you've got, because this is your chance to get your message across to those who are listening. Now you may remember from our workshop with you at Cambridge University, we gave you a few tips and tools to help deal with these kind of nerves and this kind of stress on the body. So for example, you could use your one-pointed meditation technique that we talked about. And certainly on the day that you're going to be doing some speaking, I definitely recommend doing at least 10 minutes with your eyes closed in the morning. Remember, you can also use your one-pointed meditation with your eyes open. I can do it right now. One of the other techniques we gave you to help build your energy and to not take yourself too seriously was the Muppet Wave. Now, I definitely find somewhere private to do this because you don't want to do this in front of a lot of people. But if you remember, we put our hands up and then you wave and you shake your head, stick your tongue out and pant like so. <laughs> and if you do that for just a few seconds, you can see it's kind of ridiculous, but it really helps just to build our energy up a little bit and also to perhaps move some of that nervous energy that we've experienced in preparation. We also shared with you the noticing the moment exercise. And I want to remind you of that just now because it's one of my favorite tools to use. So right now, where you are, just gently bring your awareness into your stomach. And that's easy. Now gently bring your awareness to the soles of your feet. Now gently bring your awareness into your left shoulder. Now gently put your attention on the space between me and you. So the space between you and your screen. That space was always there. We didn't necessarily have our attention on it. Now gently put your awareness on the back of your head. And now bring your awareness to the space in the whole room, the whole area in which you're sitting, behind you, below you, above you. And now notice that this moment is happening and it's still happening. What's that like for you? Notice what's going on up here, if anything. Notice how it feels in your body. And now gently, again, just notice that this moment is happening. I find this a great exercise to help center myself before I'm speaking in front of a lot of people. So that's the end of video one. Now you're warmed up, we're mentally prepared. I'll see you in the next video.